all use issues, okay? <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, Okay. So um, let me go to the presentation. Mm -hmm. How many desktops do you have? Okay. Here it is. And now I will put full screen. Okay. Is it okay? Yep. Okay. So let's start. Um, I'm from the University of Sao Paulo and I, I deal with uh, cognitive systems in the the realm of uh, electrical engineering and physics. So I, I use uh, mathematical and physical mathematical approaches mixed with uh, philosophy, neuroscience and uh, psychology and so on. And uh, I'm very interested in practicing uh, in the area of uh, the, the design of cognitive systems even that I'm in an engineering school and I'm an engineer. And I have collaborated in several uh, projects and advised several students uh, in, in this subject. And this led me to identify uh, the, the issues that are uh, usually common in the design process, okay? So what I'm going to discuss today is uh, about uh, the importance of terminology in expressing the design requirements during project specifications, okay? And for this, uh, we have proposed some working definitions of several terms like uh, cognitive process, cognition, perception, so on. And I'm taking uh, uh, particularly an information theoretical approach, okay? So my, my aim today is to uh, discuss this in, in the realm of a biological inspired cognitive systems and architectures. Okay? So here we have uh, an illustration of several uh, uh, usually found uh, cognitive, uh, said cognitive applications and maybe they are or maybe they are potential cognitive applications and uh, if they are not really cognitive, uh, uh, at least they are, they are paving the way to reach uh, the development of the truly cognitive ones. Okay? And everything, everything seems uh, very exciting and marvelous until the point that something wrong happens, like uh, uh, something have blown apart in a smart grid, grid or an autonomous vehicle hits someone, and usually this uh, leads to legal disputes. And in this case, uh, they try to trace back to the origin of the problem. And uh, if uh, it uh, appears to be uh, uh, starting in, during the development, uh, during the design process, then they start to ask, okay, why is it cognitive? Why it has to be cognitive? Uh, is it the cognitive aspect responsible for this misfunction and so on? And this points uh, why during the design process is, is so important to have a, a clear under, understanding of uh, the idea of uh, what is cognitive terms uh, means and uh, mm, they affect this, uh, the, the design steps in, in several points. Okay? And uh, the, the reason usually why the, the cognitive uh, meaning of translating to problems is usually because the terms are not usually clearly stated. And uh, this, this is cause of some lack of agreement between uh, terms that are disputed uh, among uh, researchers or antagonistic views, uh, mainly in the philosophic aspects and uh, or intentionally loose definitions. I have uh, uh, testimon testimony, uh, several of them during uh, this uh, about 14 years that I have been working in this area specifically. And I, I, 
addresses some of this, uh, co the consequences of this in, in, in this article here that is cited in the reference uh, that, uh, at, at the end of the presentation. Okay? Um, many of these aspects uh, are linked to a simplifying view of the question of what is uh, the cognitive, what does it mean? And this is called, uh, uh, the simplification is called the, the umbrella model. Okay? So when you have a, a very complex uh, concept, it's quite common to uh, link these concepts to other concepts that help to clarify it and uh, forget about uh, the concept itself. It's, it's what happened with cognition. Uh, cognition is seen uh, a mix of this, uh, this uh, uh, process, attention, perception, action, language, and so on. Okay. So what, what we identified uh, is that it's more interesting to substitute the cognition term in the umbrella by the cognitive process term. And, uh, concentrate on the clarification of what is this, uh, this cognitive process and uh, uh, consider that all these other processes are in fact uh, composed of this cognitive process. What makes a confusion is to consider that cognition is made of these other process when what happens is usually the opposite. Cognition is part of this other process and is a process on its own. Okay. So cognitive process uh, must be taken as a, a generic, a generic uh, informative process, a process that deal with information, which include events, experiences, and modulators like emotions, uh, all then um, uh, relevant for uh, behavioral control and uh, Cognition is a particular uh, case, uh, is one of, of the mo most complex of these cases. And it's a system of cognitive process, which uh, objective is uh, to build a knowledge base and focus it in, in the using of invariants among different con contexts. And all the other uh, processes here are, in fact, systems of cognitive process. So these are composed and complex uh, processes. And compositionality is an aspect very important in this uh, scenario. Okay. So what do we mean by invariance through contexts? Um, you, you can have uh, concepts that are mixed uh, uh, with uh, other uh, pieces of information during uh, interaction uh, with the environment. And uh, th these parts, they are invariant uh, among these different contexts, are the, the non-contextual parts, are the, the context invariant parts. Okay? And uh, by uh, generalizing over these contexts, you can uh, find uh, the, the invariants. And these invariants are potential candidates of uh, being considered as knowledge. So knowledge is uh, a kind of information that has uh, an intrinsic meaning, what's called a, a semantic meaning. It's not referred to any particular con context. In fact, uh, in contrast with this, uh, meaning attached to a particular context that is intrinsic, it's called a pragmatic meaning. It's a meaning that is related to a specific use. Okay. And uh, uh, meaning associated to the, to the non-contextual reference of uh, the information, uh, the contextual part of the information. So information uh, have a reference that uh, contains a contextual part and a non-contextual part. And this non-contextual part is uh, what is related to knowledge. Um, okay, 
Since the applications involve cognitive process, uh, we're going to, to show it in the, uh, an, an, an information an information flow. Okay, so um, the agent can interact with the environment and make observations that come as signals that are encoded in the form of internal data. And the, the relevant part of this data constitutes the, the relevant information over which the cognitive process uh, work and detect information invariance. And it can also construct knowledge. Uh, the process of uh, information detection is an iterative process, uh, an iteration over uh, context va uh, variations and uh, uh, the, the detection of uh, possible invariants present there. Okay. Um, uh, it also detects relations and try to seek invariant relations between this, this information's invariants in, again, in another uh, higher, a higher hierarchical uh, invariance uh, iterate, iterative process, okay? And uh, by doing these iterations, it, the structure can arise and uh, leads to the construction of knowledge. So th this process is the, the resulting of the composition of the, these other process, in fact. So this is the idea. So have this in mind, and we, we can uh, suggest some working definitions that are very suited to cognitive system design. Uh, definitions that can can provide a clear design specification. And th those ones that I am presenting here uh, as a sample of the, the, the long list are the cognitive process can be understood as a process that detects information invariants and their relations. Cognition is a system of this cognitive process and the system uh, detects uh, and builds knowledge from the species informations that are invariant through contexts. Okay, so we can have a system of processes that detects this invariant through contexts. This is cognition. And we can have other kinds of systems of uh, um, cognitive process, like perception, that in, instead of detection invariant through context, the task detects uh, invariants in specific task contexts in particular realms like uh, the action context. This is why you usually call the perception action cycle because they are intimately connected by the, the action context, okay? And of course, the, these are, uh, these have a pragmatic meaning, okay? So this is uh, the, the working definition proposed. These definitions are sufficient for uh, the design. Um, we have tested this idea in, uh, in an educational scenario uh, at the university in a, in a discipline that we, we offered uh, every year. And we have classes from uh, four years ago to, to the present. And we have tested with um, about uh, 30 to 40 students uh, doing projects. And uh, we, we could uh, uh, appreciate that they, they have uh, found uh, uh, an improvement by using uh, this kind of uh, definitions. Their, their, pro their projects uh, became more clear and uh, could reach to uh, uh, an, uh, a good implementation, okay? Well, um, however, none of the, those projects were biologically inspired ones because of the, the choices, own choices of the students. No one uh, chose to make a biologically inspired pro project. This, this is uh, interesting because even uh, having among the students some that came from the biologic, uh, biologic sciences, 
although that this is an engineering school, we offer this uh, discipline to all the campus. And for our students of the campus and for students that came from abroad, because uh, uh, we have cooperation with se several universities, universities like the Technical University of, of München and uh, uh, Oxford and many other ones. Okay, and uh, uh, what I'm going to do now is is uh, to consider the aspects that should be considered in order to include the biological inspired uh, uh, systems in uh, this this uh, uh, proposal. Okay, and maybe this. Uh, because it was not uh, explicitly uh, presented, uh, maybe because of this, the students were not uh, so uh, um, challenged to to choose uh, biological inspired systems. Okay, so the idea follows from the fact that uh, uh, um, cognitive system specifications are usually dominated by psychological descriptions. And we have to go from psychological to biological descriptions. And this uh, requires that uh, uh, a bridge between the, the psychological description and the biological uh, should be constru constructed. And for this, we employed the idea of uh, Nagelian reduction. Uh, and Snago presented the idea of having bridge principle that could be understood as something like uh, if you have a psychological description that uh, a psychological stage P1 leads causally to a psychological state, stage P2 and uh, you have uh, some correlations between uh, psychological states uh, P1 and some biological states B, B, B1 and P2 with B2 um, by having this bridge principle, you can find, you, you can uh, deduce or induce uh, a reduction uh, from psychological to biological. So you can conclude that B1 is causally connected to B, B2 because P1 is causally connected to B2. Okay? This bridge laws uh, uh, so lead to what we call an identification between these correlated states. And a, a, a good example is the case of the grandmother cell. Uh, suppose a, a, a child see uh, her grandmother and uh, the sensation leads to some evoked memory of uh, her grandmother. So this is a psychological explanation. A biological explanation should be, okay, you have uh, some activity in the retina and uh, this activity in the retina corresponds, leads to an activi activity on the lower occipital cortex. And uh, in the further uh, region, like the ventral region, ventral pathway, you find a, a cell that is uh, optimally tuned to that uh, particular um, stimulus. Okay? So we have some kind of, of bridging here. And the usefulness uh, of, of this, this bridging approach is to consider, supposing that now you, you're going to a psychological explanation, say, say that the evoked memory of the grandmother uh, also leads to some uh, affective conscious experience. And uh, you, you can, through a bridge, a bridge law, um, suppose that you have a, a conscious correlate, biological correlate of uh, this affective experience. So you, you devise an experiment uh, like an, an fMRI experiment to detect which is the, wh where is the area that responds to, to this uh, uh, affective conscious experience. And once you have uh, detected it, you can use it this possible existing bridge laws uh, to connect causally uh, this known phenomenon to this new one that you have discovered because there is this 
bridging uh, connection with a, a causal, causal connection supposed in biological, in psychological terms, okay? Uh, I, I'm not entering these details now. Uh, sorry, uh, just uh, want to point out you are talking for 20 minutes already. Already? I think oh. so. Oh, no, I, 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 I think it's 15. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, I'm finishing. Okay, so this is why I'm not considering here. I only was to mention that uh, this was uh, not a, a purely statistical inference because you have causal uh, phenomena related, so you you have to recur to logic also. Huh? And uh, uh, what you have here in the biological case is that you, uh, a, a, you have a, a token identity and this token identity that is the, the cornerstone of the, the fun functionalism, functionalist approach can be transported to the idea of uh, having a, biolo a biologically inspired uh, artificial system because it, it reproduces the same functionality of uh, a biological uh, working in an artificial system. So th this is the consideration that we, we must do here, okay? And uh, in, in our proposal in particular, what we want to do is to propose the, these uh, bridge theories to be information, information theoretical ones, because usually these this bridges nowadays are uh, purely uh, uh, Experimentally uh, uh, produces are, are are not theoretical approaches. Okay. Um, you can find some of, of uh, these details in, in, in these uh, publications, particularly in this green one. You can ask me if you are interested. Ask me if you research case. Okay. And th thank you. If uh, something was uh, very quickly, I. I can clarify now in the class. I'm sorry for the, the delay. Maybe you consider the, the part that I was I struggling with my computer, <laughs> I think. Uh, thank you for your talk. I would like to make a comment, even though we are behind the schedule. I Personally, I uh, disagree with you. Mm. I understand that uh, terminology is the most difficult problem in science, in, in every field of science. And uh, in this field in particular, I find uh, all kinds of terminology in different schools. Uh, in the US, in Russia, in uh, now I see in Brazil, they all are different. And I heard, uh, last week I heard uh, some somebody else given their definitions. So I just have to explain that uh, the term cognitive architecture emerged historically as uh, referring not to an architecture, but to the entire agent. It means yes. uh, architecture together with function, with dynamic laws, with learning rules, everything. That's just happened for historical reasons, starting from Alan Newell, and we cannot change that. Uh, now, I completely against uh, saying that uh, cognition is a narrow uh, subset of uh, cognitive processes. To me, it sounds like synonyms, uh, cognition and cognitive processes. Well, it, at least it, it's obvious, but uh, there must be strong reason for making this change. Uh, I understand that this terminology exists in the University of San Paulo for years, but uh, still I believe there are many other schools that do not accept. Uh, for example, in Russia, cognition is understood as a synonym of learning, whereas in the United States, it is understood as a synonym of thinking. And there is even a program funded by the funding agency called Cognition and learning, which means that those are different things. For, for Russian scientists, that's one and okay. the same thing. <laughs> and that's funny because I cannot yes, change their mind. The exact point to the issue is because of this bubble of uh, 
of the terminology mm -hmm. that we, we can have problems in the future. So uh, what I'm proposing is that we have we take an, a new start and begin to examine uh, if we can have a, a neutral terminology. Yeah, but please let me finish, okay? So I am against this particular change, this, this particular choice and... Uh, uh, because there, there are uh, there are other better traditions, I believe. Like you say, uh, you talk about perception uh, action cycle, which to me is called the cognitive cycle and includes perception, cognition, and action necessarily. Uh, now, uh, well, f f regarding uh, invariance, well, you co you call that information. Uh, in, information theory based approach uh, but we can also call it functionalist approach uh, now the identity theory is typical for neuroscientists like in, in philosophy there is identity theory there is functionalism uh, and so on dualism and so on for example uh, I can uh, argue that most neuroscientists uh, support identity theory view but uh, Chalmers pointed that there, there might be another another kind of view on consciousness, on subjective experience, and it just it is not reducible to, uh, to that uh, primitive uh, identity theory. Um, so, yeah, and I, I could go on and on. I, <laughs> I just don't want yeah, to take yeah. time of everybody. Thank you. I'm aware of all these problems, and I, I'm, I'm disposed to, to fight in this area because I, I don't I, want I, to fight <laughs> I just no, pointed I, I the, the good sense. I, pointed I mean, that there is a different view okay the big uh, constructive discussions okay so uh, Alexei if you if you allow me to, oh, to please please to please jump in the yes. discussion so, uh, so I, I, face, first of okay. all. <laughs> um, uh, I, I believe that maybe this uh, notion of, of cognition as some something separate comes from the period of cognitivism, where uh, people are trying to identify cognition with the the, the, uh, the computer, and it, it is a, a kind of a, a part of history of, of cognitive science. But when Maturana and Varela uh, brought the idea of embodied uh, situated cognition, uh, where they uh, explain the importance of perception and action for cognition, I believe that uh, there was a change in, in, in how people uh, uh, understand the thing. And so cognition started to uh, uh, incorporate perception and action in, in, inside it. So depending on how you were trained uh, at the beginning, if you are trained in the cognition, cognitivism tradition, you have this tendency to, to, to understand that cognition is a separate thing. If you are more alike to, to uh, uh, incorporating uh, embodied uh, situated cognition from Maturani Varela, uh, then uh, you you uh, you accept better that perception and action are part of, of cognition. So I, I believe it's uh, there. There are two traditions, and I, I believe that <laughs> João maybe is is, is more uh, uh, inclined to to the first uh, kind of tradition that understands that cognition is a separate thing that deals only with symbols and symbolic processing and and, and things like that. But this this, this is just a, a hypothesis for for uh, how this idea uh, emerged and, and appeared in in the community. And and I would say that even if in São Paulo they think like that in Campinas, which is also in Brazil, we think on the opposite direction. So uh, it, it's really something that is, is very much akin to, to the traditions, schools within cognitive science. At least that, that's my view. So I see that even in Brazil, there is no unique view on this topic. No, no. <laughs> I, have, I have a lot of discussions uh, with João about that because uh, we, we are always fighting in a good sense because he, he has this position, I have the opposite position and we are trying to convince each other that, uh, you know, uh, uh, we, we are thinking differently. But uh, I believe that this is because of this tradition uh, uh, from cognitive realism in, in philosophy of mind. Uh, this is what brought uh, uh, to this situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I don't know if you agree with me, Jean. <laughs> Probably not. Anybody else, please uh, add to this discussion. I think it's also with uh, uh, electrophysiological people and people that uh, deal with uh, uh, neuroscience. So th this is a, a very common, a quite common view in, in neuroscience. Not the, the cognitive neuroscience, but uh, the el electrophysiological neuroscience. Okay. You, you mean power of reflexes, behaviorism, right? Yes, more or less behaviorism. Yeah, so that's the past, I, I believe, for, for half of the humanity at least. But um, yeah, does anybody else want to add a few words? Artemi, you, ah, you, you are the next speaker? This is why you showed you up? <coughs> Yes, just and, and you don't want to say anything about this debate? Uh, <laughs> that's complicated because nobody knows what the cognitive architecture is. So different but researchers. I, I have my definition. I have yes. my definitions. I don't want to yes, impose indeed. them on everybody, indeed. but <laughs> I agree. they are different <laughs> from yours. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway. Okay. Uh, so we can, uh, I guess. Uh, uh,